And so in my lab, we're geneticists. We are interested in how bacteria talk to each other. And what was so fantastic about bioluminescence was that you can just see what the bacteria do when they talk. They turn on light. Most things bacteria do are invisible. And so we want to understand how this works. And so what was really nice about these bioluminescent bacteria and why this got discovered in bioluminescent bacteria is because the readout of cell-cell communication is so easy to observe. And so what a geneticist can do is we can simply make mutants. We can sort of beat these cells up plate them out on petri plates, turn the lights off in the room, and simply look for bacteria that aren't making light with our eyes, that aren't making light when they should be, or are making light when they shouldn't be. And just by doing that simple experiment of looking on a plate for guys that were making light at the wrong times, that's how we got the results in the first experiment I showed you, and how we figured out the quorum sensing system in this other bacterium. is because the bacteria had this beautiful, well, plus they make great Christmas tree ornaments. No, they, yeah. they yeah, right, you know, and plus, and I like pretty bacteria. It was, so it was a really, so you guys get that, right? It was really simple, and this was how we got into quorum sensing, and now we understand that all these behaviors are controlled by quorum sensing, but we couldn't see those things. And so bioluminescence, you could just see, and so that was the beginning of the field. So, a side is done. Um, so anyway, so we started working on this relative Virbio Harvii, doing these tricks, just looking for bacteria that made light at the wrong times. And what we found out was that, of course, this bacterium had quorum sensing, but it was a more sophisticated system than the Vibrio Fisheri system. So again, this is going to be my bacterial cell. And so what we found was that, indeed, the bacterium had an enzyme that made a species-specific molecule, and the partner receptor was there, just like I told you, for all these hundreds of species of bacteria. But what we also found is that running in parallel with that system, there was another enzyme that made a different molecule that got released, and it had a partner receptor on the surface for that molecule. And then together, this information from these two different chemicals came into the cell and tells the cell to turn on and off light based on whether these two molecules are there. And so when we got those results, we wondered, you know, why would you have two systems? I mean, if, if the information encoded in those two molecules is identical, two systems is not better than one. It's only if these two molecules mean something different to the bacterial cell. So to do an experiment to think about how that might work, what we did was we made a bacterium that was missing this system. So now light turns on if you provide the red triangle, that molecule, right? Light will turn on. And we made the reciprocal mutant. So we made a mutant that was missing the first system. And so now light turns on only if you give the second molecule, right? So everybody gets that. So either of the systems work. And then remember, these molecules are on the outside of cells. So what we did was we just collected up every bacterium we could find. We grew the cells up. And then we, we using a centrifuge, we took the cells out and took the liquids that were left over. And and then we put them, can I go backwards? Yeah. So we asked, we put those liquids on this Vibrio harvii, and nothing happened. So we could never find another species of bacterium that made a molecule that turned on light through this system. And that should make sense, because I've already told you these systems are species specific. But every bacterium that we tested made the molecule that turned on light through this system. And so our interpretation of those results is that these are two different languages. The first language, the red triangles, is the language of intraspecies communication. This, every bacterium has its own molecule, and that's how it counts its siblings. The second molecule we found was made generically in the bacterial world. All bacteria make it, so we think this is the bacterial trade language, or the bacterial Esperanto. This is the universal language of bacteria that says other. It says interspecies communication. And so then again, we went to molecular biology. We cloned the gene and the enzyme that makes that molecule. And you guys probably know we have hundreds and hundreds of bacterial genomes. You know how we have the human genome? We have bacterial genomes, too. And so you can take your favorite gene and plug it into these databases and ask, does anybody else have that gene? So we cloned the gene for this molecule. We named it LUX-S. We put it in the database. And sure enough, when we looked in the database, all kinds of other species of bacteria had a highly conserved Lux S gene, and they all made this second molecule. And I don't know who, so we have about 600 genomes here at this point. I don't know who you guys want to know on this slide. Um, this is anthrax, right? This is Lyme disease, gangrene, listeria. There's some 
mono, that's mono, there's some teenagers here, right? Like uh, this is cavities, this is, you know, um, bubonic plague, cholera. It was a who's who of clinical pathogens, right? And so what we started to wonder is if it's really true, the bacteria can talk to each other with intra and interspecies communication. And if it's true in this system, like in the first system, that this core sensing through this universal molecule, if that controls pathogenicity in these bacteria, what you can start to think about is to make anti quorum sensing strategies that could be used as new antibiotics. And so indeed, we started to study what are all these other bacteria doing with this molecule. I mean, they're obviously not turning on bioluminescence. They don't have bioluminescence. And so sure enough, and, and this had to be true or else I would not be invited here tonight, <laughs> right? You know, we started to look at these different bacteria and ask what do they control with this molecule, the system two molecule, and in every case, it was biofilms and virulence. So just like in the species specific systems, it seems that being able to talk within species is really important, like counting is very important for turning on and off these group behaviors, including biofilms, you know, how bacteria adhere to surfaces, and then the secretion of these virulence factors. So the next thing to do was to do chemistry and ask, well, what is this molecule? And so we solved the structure of this molecule. These were the pink ovals in my slide. And so this is it. These are carbons. So it's a very simple five carbon molecule. And that ends up being really important if you're going to make drugs. Um, and what was the most important thing about it was unlike the intraspecies communication systems, where I showed you each molecule was slightly different than every other. Every bacterium that has Luxess and makes this molecule makes exactly the same molecule. So this really is a generic language that says other. And then um, that was important for the next strategy I'll show you. The fact that the molecule is really small and simple, that was a gift from the bacterium. We couldn't predict that. That just happened to be the case, that it turned out to be a really simple molecule. So now what we're thinking about bacteria is we think all bacteria are built at, at a minimum like this. It's probably much more complicated than we know right now, but we think at least all bacteria are multilingual in that they have two molecules. They have some molecule that is their molecule that is for intraspecies communication to count their siblings. They use this second, what we call autoinducer two, this interspecies generic molecule to say other. And what we know now is that the computation that bacteria do, the first thing they do, the simple computation, they simply ask, am I alone or am I in a group? So they just say no molecule or molecule, right? So am I alone or am I in a community? And then the more sophisticated question that they ask is, is it me or is it you? And so now what we're starting to understand is that bacteria can in fact measure the ratios of these molecules. And so they can tell, is my species in the majority and yours in the minority or the reverse? And then they carry out different group tasks depending on whether a particular community is mostly my siblings are mostly my enemies, right? And so we know they're doing a very sophisticated calculation and we're just now starting to learn how they manage to integrate the information. But what I thought I would do, and, and so we're interested in understanding that because we don't understand how any organism integrates chemical information. And so it's fun to work on these bacteria to think about those principles. But what I thought I would do to finish the talk, you got here just in time for the high points. Um, <laughs> the most clever person in the audience, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to fail the test. Anyway, um, let's see. So what I thought I would do is to try, you know, it's fun to learn about these bacteria. You know, they've been here billions of years. They figured out the rules for multicellularity. And so we're just interested to learn that. But it turns out that we can actually, which is amazing for my gang, do something practical too, besides just learning about these social behaviors. What we'd like to do, and I've already alluded to this, is if we could purposely manipulate these conversations, maybe we could make new kinds of therapeutics, right? I mean, I guys, I'm sure you guys, you're here tonight, you guys know that bacterial infections is a global, you can go back there into the <laughs> museum, it's a globally important problem, right? We are out of antibiotics because bacteria have become resistant to the traditional antibiotics that we have available. We need to think about new ways to treat bacteria and new kinds of antibiotics.